So I have been using GNOME for about three weeks now as my main daily driver. And obviously I've used GNOME in the past and every time I do, I come away from it just not liking it. Now, I have evolved somewhat over the years in terms of my thoughts on GNOME. I don't absolutely hate it and I've come around to the idea that it's just a workflow that sometimes just doesn't suit my the way my way of doing things. But I've been using it now for three weeks and I've come up with some things that I need to talk about because there are a few things or a few areas where I was just wrong and I think that the biggest one and the one I'm going to talk about the most is that I was I've just been thinking about GNOME in the wrong way for years like absolute ever since I started using Linux I've been thinking about GNOME in the wrong way and the way I usually think about GNOME is that I use this thing and then I have to use extensions to make it work the way that I want it to work and I feel like that's wrong like I feel like it's a naughty thing to do do because the GNOME devs are at least somewhat anti-extension they, like, they have a way they want you to use their desktop environment and you can kind of tell that it feels or at least it feels kind of like they don't want you to use extensions to change or alter that workflow it's not true really but it feels that way sometimes and one of the reasons why it feels that way is because oftentimes when there's a brand new version of gnome all the extensions break and there's this stereotype that makes it feel like every time that happens gnome's doing it on purpose right because they don't like extensions they want you to do things in their way and if you don't do it their way they're going to screw with you every time they do an update but that is wrong okay and it didn't occur to me that it was wrong until just a couple days ago i've been thinking about gnome in exactly the wrong way and i think we should talk about that so let's talk a little bit first about that preconceived notion, right? Because GNOME, vanilla GNOME, for me personally, is completely unusable. There are many parts of that vanilla experience that just would not work. I could not use it for a single day. Things like the lack of a minimize button, the lack of the ability to minimize by clicking on the icon in the dock, the lack of the task tray icons up in the top bar where you can th get things like Dropbox and Nextcloud and things like that. Those things are, aren't there by default. You have to add extensions to get them. Things like a clipboard indicator and um, actual menu system, all those things are things that I actually really want or desperately need if I'm going to use GNOME and they're just not there. So extensions provide those things for me. And up until basically now, I always felt the, the idea of using extensions to be a, a chore. Like I didn't want to have to do this thing. I don't, I, like I shouldn't have to do it. GNOME should just have a minimize button built in, like why doesn't it? Every other operating system on the planet or desktop environment, at least in Linux, has one. Why doesn't GNOME have one by default? It really should, right? You know, all these things, right? They're, they were things that I thought about GNOME and have thought about GNOME for a very long time. But then I was thinking, so I used to have this favorite window manager called DWM. I still like DWM to this day. Sometimes, in fact, I'll actually go through and patch DWM for fun. Even if I don't have any intentions of actually using it, I'll just go through and see how many patches I can add to DWM. Now, DWM is one of those things where if you just use the vanilla, it's basically unusable, at least for me it is. You know, there are certain things like not being able to move a client up in the stack or moving between stacks and things that you absolutely have to have in a window manager, at least in my opinion, and those things aren't built in. You have to patch them in. And I was thinking about this a couple days ago that there's not that much difference between DWM and its patches and GNOME and its extensions and when I thought about that it was like a eureka moment like why do I bitch so much about extensions but I actually like the way DWM does patches DWM the suckless guys they have their way of doing things absolutely their way of doing things and every time they push out a new version of DWM guess what patches break it's just the nature of the beast. It happens. Now, not all the patches break. Some of the patches do break. Some of them have been basically on the same version forever and they never break. The lines of code or the lines of C in this case, they move around. So it causes things to break. How is that different than on GNOME and their extensions? Like not all the extensions break every time there's a new version of GNOME. 
that doesn't happen. Some of them do. I'm presuming it's because certain lines of code have moved around, you know, and things are just not as compatible as they were in the previous version. There's no difference there. Now, obviously, the differences between GNOME and, and DWM kind of expand from there. One's a window manager, one's a desktop environment, and so on and so forth. So they aren't exactly the same, and I'm not arguing that they are, but that process that I like on one side, and I've found in the past that I despise on the other are basically the same. And when I thought about that, like I said, it was a eureka moment. It just kind of blew my mind because they're the same and I like one, I dislike the other. And it made me think, why do I dislike this so much? Why do I like this process of having a vanilla thing and then adding basically patches onto it to make it usable? Why do I dislike that one time and like it on the other? It made no sense. So it was a situation where I kind of had to think about it for a little while it just made me realize that maybe i actually do like the patching system maybe it, it's a system that actually does make sense and that was a complete reversal from my previous opinion of gnome like i just did not care for it. i didn't like how i had to add all these patches or how i had to add all these extensions excuse me and you know i, I just didn't like it i didn't i didn't Fit my workflow it didn't it couldn't i couldn't get through my head that you know this is a normal way of doing things and it you know it took me comparing it to dwm and it and its patches to realize that the, this process is basically exactly the same and therefore i shouldn't be so on you know judgy on the gnome side of things so that's one of my big takeaways from my three weeks with gnome I'm not leaving GNOME, by the way. I'm still on GNOME. I'm going to use this thing until it starts having problems because I need that stability in my life right now. And I really, truly have found it with GNOME. I haven't had any issues for it whatsoever. I'm going to find some wood to knock on there because I'm probably going to jinx it. But I've had a really, really good time on GNOME in terms of stability. Now, I do have qualms, right? Ever, no, there's no perfect desktop environment, especially because you know, you can't, unless someone's actually making the desktop environment for me and, and they have followed a list of all the features that I want and the way things are supposed to work and it's just for me, that would be the perfect desktop environment. But that doesn't exist, unfortunately, unless I'm going to actually make it myself, right? When developers make a, a desktop environment, they have to kind of fit it for the general population. And GNOME has done that. And then they use extensions to allow people to tweak it and make it their own, which is you know, the way things are supposed to be. But there are still uh, quite a few things that really do bother me. And, and just for example, this one kind of popped up today. I, I want to be able to turn on do not disturb with a key binding. There's no way of doing that within the GUI, okay? There's there's just not, uh, at least not by default. You can use G settings to do it. Someone on Mastodon, I'm sorry, I forgot your name, uh, gave me a uh, G settings uh, command that I can put into the GUI via the custom keyboard binding thing, and, and I was able to do it that way. But by default, there's no way of turning on, on uh, do not disturb with a key binding. And then, of course, because of the way that it's done, I have to have a key binding for both on and off, which means it's taking up two key bindings, which is a problem when you're using a 40% keyboard sometimes. So, you know, that's an issue, right? I'm just going to have to put it on another layer if I decide to use this keyboard for longer. But that's beyond the point. My, the point I'm trying to make is that there are still these little, you know, pain points in GNOME that have always been there, despite my mind change on the whole extensions ecosystem. There are just still some things that bug me quite a bit about GNOME, but there are things that bug me about KDE, and there are things that bug me about Hyperland and Wayland and all sorts of things. Nothing is ever going to be perfect, and of course, I have to complain about those things, because I'll, what else would I make videos about? <laughs> I guess this is, I'm not actually going to complain about any more of those things in, in this video, but I... I We'll probably put together a list of the things that annoy me about GNOME and a, a video about the things that I really do enjoy about those. If you're interested in those types of videos, leave those in the comment section below. We're going to make some GNOME comment. Uh, but before we jump out of this video, one thing that I do need to address for like the 5,000th time is that every time I make a GNOME video, I get at least one person saying you're pronouncing it wrong. And I'm going to put this little blurb at the end of every GNOME video that I make. No, I'm not. No, I am not. All you have to do is Google the history of GNOME, and you'll find that GNOME started out as an acronym. The first word of that acronym was GNU, G-N-U. Now, unless you're one of those people who pronounces GNU, NU, 
then I don't see where the whole gnome thing comes in. Now, I understand in the English language, gnome is the weird little thing you have in the garden. I get that. This is a desktop operating system or a desktop environment. It's not a cute little thing you put in the garden. They're different things. They can have different pronunciations. That's the neat thing about languages. Sometimes they may be spelled the same way, but they have two different meanings. They're two different things. And that's the way that it goes. So end rant. I, I, I don't know why it bugs me so much when people correct me. Like just like, just pronounce it however you really want. I don't care. I'm going to pronounce it GNOME because I know what an acronym is, but if <laughs> whatever. Anyways, uh, that's it for this video. If you have thoughts on all this stuff, um, you can leave those in the comment section below. The whole extensions thing was just something that really popped into my mind and I had to talk about it for a little while because comparing those two things, it was just kind of like, why have I never thought of it that way before? Because it, they really truly are do feel like the same way of doing things and yet I praise one way of doing things and I criticize the other way and it didn't make sense. So I had to correct myself a little bit on this and I felt like making a video about it. So anyways, comments in the comment section below if you have thoughts on this. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can also head on over to the store which is available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find a whole bunch of awesome merch, including desk mats and hats and hoodies and t-shirts and stickers and all sorts of stuff. All the proceeds for that go directly towards helping me make more Linux content for you guys. So if you have gone over to the store and supported me there, I really truly appreciate it. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. And uh, this may be the second to last video where you guys actually see end credits. I'm redesigning some of this a little bit and I'm gonna change up the end cap just a little bit just to freshen things up also to hopefully make it easier for me to actually add and re remove patrons when I need to so uh, that should be coming up in the next couple of videos and there you go anyways thanks for watching I'll see you next time